All right, we have a fair die, which just means numbers one through six, uh, equally likely to get, get any of them. Um, what's the probability that a three is obtained on at least one of the rolls? Um, I always like to just give myself a, a couple concrete examples here. So four, four times, uh, maybe you get a, uh, hold on just a second, grab my pen here. All right, let's say you got a four and then a five and then another five and then a one. That would not count because it doesn't have uh, at least one three. If you had something like three, three, six, one, that one would count because you have at least one three. Or if you have six, one, three, five, that would count because you have that at least one three. So we're just looking for at least at least one three. Um, as it turns out, it's actually pretty complicated to get this answer directly. Luckily, there's a backdoor approach that's pretty nice on this one because it's got uh, the complement rule working to our advantage. So here, if we could find the probability of not getting any threes, that would be the opposite of this situation, and we could just subtract that from one to get our answer. So what's the chance that you, you don't get any threes? Well, um, chance of, well, let me write it like, uh, hmm, here we go. Probability of no threes. Well, that would be the chance that you don't get a three on the first one. You know, any of the numbers except three. And then you don't get a three on the second one. Don't get a three on the third one. And don't get a three on the fourth one. Now, why are we multiplying all these? Because they're independent. Whatever we do on um, the first try doesn't impact the chance of, of not rolling a three on the second try or the third or the fourth. If that wasn't the case, uh, we could not just multiply them directly. We'd have to get into some conditional probability there. But but this, uh, this is not going to affect the chance of rolling a three on the first one is not related to the chance of rolling a three on the second and so on. It's not going to impact it. So this gives us five to the fourth over six to the fourth, um, which is roughly, let me do this on my calculator here really quickly. So we have five to the fourth divided by six to the fourth. And that's gonna be about 0.482. Now remember, this isn't our final answer. This is the chance of getting no threes. They want the probability of at least one three, which is exactly the opposite of what we found. It's one minus that. We found the complement. So the answer we're looking for is 0.518. It's one minus 0.482. We'll check that. All right. 